Well, thank you, church family, for logging in for these few minutes together again. Um, I guess I never tire of letting you know how very much you're missed. And um, as each week rolls by, the more so that's true. This past week, I was reading in the Old Testament, in the uh, Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, and I came across a statement made by the prophet Samuel, and it just gripped me. And the more I thought about it, and how convicting it was for me, and how the Lord was speaking to me, I felt like um, we should expand what the Lord was saying uh, through his word. And so let me read the verse to you, and then I'll explain what we've done. Working along with Kathy, and also with Marianne in printing, there's something that we're going to be sending out to you in the mail that will be a tool that you can use during this time. But Samuel said in 1 Samuel 12, 23 and 24, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. 
but I will instruct you in the good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. And as I meditated on those two verses of scripture, I, an, an idea began to develop. And so in the mail coming to you this week, just within the next couple days, is a tool that we've put together. It says on it, Kettle Falls Community Church, remembering one another in prayer. And in the pamphlet, we have some instructions on praying for one another. Uh, it's kind of a, a devotional approach to drawing near to God in fellowship with him and then upholding one another in prayer. Now in our church family, we all know that we have friends within the church, pockets of friends that we've gotten close to and they're very dear to us and we've been contacting them, texting them, praying for them. But my concern was that not everyone and some of the people that are newer in our church have a whole pocket of friends like that. And my concern was that we have believers not falling through the cracks as much as just being overlooked in intercessory prayer. And so we put this together with the names of every family and their children in this prayer tool so that you can just tuck it into your Bible and have it with you and over the weeks maybe months we do not know that we can um, pray for one another and the thought occurred to me that when we finally are able to come back together and it'll be like a wonderful spiritual reunion of all of us together when we gather to pray and worship and praise the Lord together and hear the proclamation of the Word of God what a joyful thing it's going to be. And then I thought to myself, the only thing I can think of that would enhance the joy of that gathering, that first gathering, is looking around and realizing that throughout this period, we have all been praying for one another. And so that's what this tool is for. So watch for it in the mail. It will be coming to you. And it's just there to assist you in praying for every single person in our church body and family, in addition to many others I know that you pray for. Well, with that, I want to introduce back to the pulpit for a time in the scriptures together, Pastor Terry Heft, our intern. So Terry, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing that with us, Pastor Tony, and this useful tool that you've created for us. It's, I'm sure it'll help a lot of us in our lives, and there's certainly a lot of things that can help us in our daily walk, and we're grateful for you and the rest of the church staff for preparing this tool for us and the ministry that prayer can be. And also, independently, I did not coordinate my lessons with, him, with Pastor Tony when coming up with this short series on prayer. It just so happened that God moved us in separate ways to come to this idea. Last time we were together on Sunday, we spoke briefly on what is fear, and more importantly, how our God is able to do so much more, how he is in control of our world in ways that we do not see. And we used the example from 2 Kings of Elisha and the Syrian army, and how that servant, he was rightfully afraid of the things that he saw before him until his eyes were opened to see the truth of the world. Another example is Daniel and his three friends, although specifically his three friends in this case, where they were commanded to bow before the image of King Nebuchadnezzar, and they let the king know that their God is able to deliver them. And even if he did not, they would not bow. They had faith in the power of what God could do and his plan. But most, more importantly, these people were known as people of prayer. Daniel and his friends, when they first came to the kingdom of Babylon, they challenged the prescribed diet that the king had, but they did so with respect for the tradition. They want to show that God's power in that situation, their respect for God's holy beliefs, but also that they engaged in prayer and that's what helped sustain them in that trial. They were known as people of prayer. Elisha was known as a person of prayer as well. 
So prayer is a very important thing for us. But when we look at its use in secular world today, if we were to watch on TV, it gets portrayed as off from, well, a lot of different ends of a scale. On one hand, we see that it shows people respectfully using prayer. On the other hand, it's used as a way to mock people instead in popular culture, and there's a lot of examples there. But we know that prayer is very different, but it helps to come to a common definition of prayer. And where do we turn to for common definitions? Well, Webster's Dictionary has a lot of them, and I just briefly want to go through some of them because they do help us in a way. It's use as a noun, an address to God in word or thought, a set order of words used in praying so the prayer itself can be the words we say or the time that we use to address God. It can be used as a descriptive noun, a prayer service. It describes a type of event, a substantive noun, which this is my prayer. It's used as the object in a sentence. It can be used as a verb itself, the act of engaging in prayer, in that case it's used. And one of my favorites, because it's so wrong in so many ways, is its ironic usage. I don't have a prayer. We should never be in a situation where we feel that prayer is not a solution, is not applicable in our lives, and that's the ironic usage. Instead, I want to focus on a more appropriate definition and I got some of this through reading scripture, but also the works of Eugene Peterson, a very good author, if you need some reading in the, during his time, where we're going to get to what he defined prayer as. But prayer, when we look at it, is a response to God. God is doing all these things in creation. In the, in the text that we looked at last time, where Elisha asked that the eyes of the servant would be opened, the army of God is active in the world. He's active in creation. And we can, for people who study physics, you can see how there's always reference to this force outside the system that acts upon it. And Sir Isaac Newton attributed that to God. So our prayer is a response. When we're responding to God, we're having an interaction with God. He is doing things in my life. I am responding back to him. That's an interaction. Through this interaction, I am having a conversation with God. I am letting him know through my study of his word, what's going on in my life, and vocalizing that to God in prayer or in thought or voice. So we are having a conversation. When we're having a conversation with God on a regular basis, we're having a relationship with God. And all of this comes about with prayer, is fellowship with God. It's how we maintain our relationship with him. It's more than he has done these things, so therefore I respond to him out of fear. It's I want, he wants an active relationship with us, and I want one with him. That is our desire. And this is in, reinforced in scripture itself as well. We can see prayer's importance from Psalms 145, verse 18. And there it is recorded, the Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. We can see there how this nearness to God when we pray, this how God wants us to call upon him, and how he is actively with us when we pray. So we see there the command for fellowship, the desire for fellowship from God, that when we pray, we all draw near to him. So some situations then where prayer is appropriate, well, certainly we can turn to God in times of trouble. And from the secular view of what television, Hollywood, and all the other things do, that's where most characters in most of these dramas turn to God or turn to prayer in times of trouble. And certainly we are commanded to do so in Scripture. In Psalm 62, verse 8, it says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And going back to the fellowship and relationship in that passage, what kind of relationship is God describing there? Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. In my case, I can think of relationship with family. Who are the people I can pour out my heart to? My parents, certainly. My siblings. In my case, my marine brethren, where we consider ourselves a family and hope. And I want the relationship that I can get to the point with Pastor Tony, with the entire congregation, where I can be able to pour my heart out before you, to be that family. And that's the, 
what's described here. God is described as a relationship where we can pour our heart out for him to let him know what is troubling us. Also, we are told in times of rejoicing to turn to God. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, there it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That also speaks of times right before, in times of trouble, give thanks before God. And it can be hard at times when you are at your lowest to give thanks for the things going on in your life. And in my own current situation right now, I just moved up here. My family is now 500 miles away. And with the current order in effect, I can, I can admit I'm feeling the isolation a lot. But then there's times where I've had people stop by my house, drop off cookies. Thank you very much for them. They were delicious, by the way. <laughs> but in that, I can rejoice that I, I have every reason to feel isolated, to feel alone. But people have gone out of their way to make me feel welcome. And in that, I can rejoice in this situation because in times like this, it really shows how much people care for when, how they want to connect with me in, in a trying situation like that. So in this case, in this situation, I give praise to God and thank him for the things he has done in this situation. That is how we can give thanks in times of trial. So during this time, when we're, we have this opportunity to establish new habits, I see some of the prayer ministries already in effect, the love in action, seeing the emails that go out and just the request for prayer. It touches my heart to see this congregation, this body engaged so much in prayer already as part of their daily lives. I encourage you to keep doing that. Try to find more ways of engaging with God. We have this free time on our hands for those that have it. Let us try to renew ourselves. Find ways that we can rejoice with the things that God has given us. Next time we're, we gather together, at least when I teach, I don't know, we're working on schedules. We're going to be looking more on the individual aspect of prayer. So thank you for joining us today and during this time and this lesson that we could learn on prayer. I look forward to speaking again with you and the time that we have together. Let us close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that we can gather. Even though the situations are, are different from our normal, we thank you for your power, your sovereignty, your control over the situation, Lord, even though we cannot see it at times. We ask, Lord, that you be with our leaders right now as they are trying to find ways of controlling this virus, Lord. We ask that you keep our first responders safe, our doctors safe, as they are putting themselves at risk to help out the people in most need. We ask that you help us, Lord, to be patient, to look out for one another, and more importantly, to help us turn to you in prayer at this time. Lord, we do thank you for these many things that you have done for us. We thank you for what you have given us. We thank you for the family of this church. We thank you for all these great things that you are doing in our lives. In the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.